شاهنامه استوریز The Seven Labors of Rustam هفت خانه رستم The Combat with Arjangdiv continued While none reached the dignified humanity of the Arjangdiv in the Shahname of Shah Tahmas, nonetheless, the image of the demon continued to change over the next few centuries, bringing depth and even humor. In this painting, a blue-spotted Arjang wrestles with Rustam, whose helmet matches the Dev's long leopard-skin tunic. In a dance-like tussle, the sinewy Dev has wrapped his left arm around Rostam's leg and is pulling him off his horse as his right reaches up to grab him by the shoulder. The force with which he squeezes Rostam and has dislodged him is indicated by Rakhsh's navy and gold saddle pad that has gathered against the Dev's hip. Although restrained in bestial traits with ordinary hands and toes, with no claws or spurs, Arjang's shaggy black hair that sprouts from his well-formed calves and elbows contrasts the well-groomed Rostam, whose clothing is often complemented by the equally refined Rakhsh. Described as red-headed at birth, Rostam is depicted with a red beard and moustache that although carefully detailed here, show little expression beyond a blank stare ahead. Looking out in a way, Rostam pulls down on the demon's head by the horn to stab the exposed throat. The impact of the blow is communicated by the loose tongue and open mouth through which the gushing blood gurgles. Arjang's floppy ears frame the curly crop of hair below which flaming gold eyelids highlight the glazed bloodshot eyes. To the left, the plant mimics the tangle with graceful choreography as its long, lanky reeds sweep, arch, twirl, bend and bow with flourish. Behind them, a pink div gapes as his ear flares across to report the horror to the blue div whose second ear flops in a dopey doze. The most bizarre is the red-eyed, dainty, dancing black div holding two pink rocks that seem to function more as castanets than weapons as he jingles his way out of the painting. The tight-fitting gold bells around his knees and ankles provide the tune for his two-step whose bounce lifts the lining of his skirt that matches Arjang's and is picked up in the orange eyes and sultry, pouting lips. Here, in one of four D illustrations from this manuscript, an exquisitely dressed pink Arjang wrestles with Rostam against a rocky landscape filled with agitated flora and fauna. Above them, the indignant tree engages in a shouting match with the squalling bushes to which Ulad is tied. Behind the rocks, three divs peer from a safe distance. The blue and brown in intense debate, the white worriedly pondering the uncanny resemblance of the detached leopard head sitting atop Rostam's helmet to his own. The trees form a triangular frame that is repeated in the rock landscape and the composition of the entangled trio. Feverish foliage and frazzled flowers crawl, scamper and bolt from under the rocks. On the right, screeching roots and branches wave frantically as they cling precariously to the edge of the landscape that breaks out of the margin. With fiendish fortitude, Arjang's gold eyes blaze under the furrowed leonine brow and human nose as his red tongue darts out in a thunderous roar and the mouth's blue ripples fan out to white, blasting back the pink mane. At his neck, Rostam's left thumb has dug in to tear the head off the shoulder, spurting a torrent of blood 
that streams down, splashing onto the heads of the plants and up into the gasping gullet of the vicious pink snake tail. In a similarly structured composition, but in reverse, Rostam, Rakhsh and Arjang Div battle in the midst of an alarmed landscape. Here, where the Div has now remarkably modified his appearance, a refined, beautifully dressed and groomed blue-eyed Arjang turns away wistfully, while Rakhsh cringes at the bloody spray of the slit throat. His human face, with its trimmed beard and sad downturned moustache beneath the fine nose and eyebrows, contrasts the flared ears, hooked horns and spotted hide that struggles against Rostam and Rakhsh's grip. The strain of his painful pull is felt in the anguished wrench of the tree whose branches shoot out of the left margin and its red round blossoms explode into the swirling rush of clouds. Although the late 17th century was more the time of wall and single page paintings, such as those in the Chehel Sutun Palace in Esfahan that we will look at, the Safavid artists continued to create lavish manuscript illustrations. This bright and colourful manuscript from the reign of Shah Abbas II contains the rare number of six div illustrations that include two divs that are not usually featured. The palette is notable for its bright and saturated colour scheme, often combining half-tones such as pink, purple, orange, mint green and earth colours. Lending the compositions a new visual boldness, the sky is a strong blue filled with whirling white clouds created by dashes of broad brushstrokes. Here, in a patterning of space, the rose-coloured landscape rises to form petal peaks of pink and lilac dusted with pale green. Feathery plants fan out against the veined rocks reminiscent of hyacinth buds. At the center, forming the central axis of the rock spears, Rostam and Rash bring the fearsome Arjang to his knees. His putrid spotted skin contrasts his elegant three-layered gold-embroidered tunic that matches Rash's highly ornate and luxurious saddle pad as he lowers his bejeweled bridle to take a voracious mouthful out of Arjang's knee. Although no blood has yet been spilt, disturbed by the commotion, the flowers that had been frolicking happily in the lush, moss-green grass now scamper about in distress. Some even seem to have jumped up from beneath Arjang's feet to pose as decoration on the tent border. This unusually vivacious and colourful painting has all the elements of the narrative. That is, Arjang's tent and his accompanying divs that, with the exception of the one sitting calmly in the tent, run away in terror when they see Rostam pull off their leader's head. Its bright colour, in which shades of yellow and orange dominate, heralds its Indian origin that together with its customary dynamism, makes for a highly entertaining painting. The most eccentric feature is Arjang's growling blue head that hovers above his flesh-coloured torso. Evidently still very much alive, the detached div mug stares at a distracted Rostam, who holds it up by the tall orange horns that judging by their fancy tassels, black plume and gold bands, are the Dives' pride and joy. The same composition appears again in this delicate, rather lovely late Indian manuscript, in perhaps the most dramatic depiction of the combat with Arjang Div. However, as with all Shahnameh's, despite the enormous number of illustrations of the same story, 
no two are ever alike. So while these share the same dynamic structure, action and characters, there are marked, if subtle, differences. In a soft Beatrix Potter-like landscape filled with wisps of blossoming shrubs, a startled grey rabbit peers over pink candy floss boulders onto a noisy and gruesome scene. At the centre, Rostam has yanked a black, hairy, heavily bejeweled Arjang by the left arm and has torn off his superb blue head that, live and livid, fumes with rage. Dark blood gushes from both the neck and tendrils of the freshly decapitated head with bugged-out gold eyes that growls in fury at its precarious predicament. The speed with which the demon is pulled forward is conveyed by the white and pink feathery plumes that catch the air. The force of the lurch pulls the arm out of its socket as the legs lose their balance, followed by the gasp of the dragon-headed tail. The flowers and bushes, pretty and dainty in this manuscript, screech and agitate as Rach turns away in disgust at being stuffed into the bleeding mess of the neck. An unfortunate characteristic of many of the illustrations is the loss of context when the image is removed from its accompanying text. The damage upsets the balanced relationship that has been carefully measured and metered in advance. The intent of the experience can be seen in this manuscript that is still intact. While the illustration is enjoyable on its own, notice how the sweeping and buoyant diagonals of the facing text counterbalance and enhance the energy and lyricism of the hopping, skipping and running figures. In the next video, Rostam finally reaches the lair of the white div for his final feat of the seventh labor.